Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Dangerous Waters and today we are going to be going over the 688i in Los Angeles which is a Los Angeles class attack submarine and so I changed a few things from last time and and looks like I also screwed up my numbering but anyway what I changed was I got rid of some of the um, class or the uh, ship classes and aircraft because I decided that they kind of have very common things and the only thing that's really different between some of the two um, between each other is the way that they look on a display. So, um, the only reason why I'm doing both of these is because they are fairly different. I mean, they're both two. They're both two fairly completely different ships. Uh, they're both subs. They're both Russian. So the layout is quite the same. So these, t uh, this one should be about the same as this one, uh, lengthwise, um, and episode-wise. And the kilo shall be probably a bit shorter and then we'll continue on to the rest of these and then I'll um, combine it all and kind of wrap it all up in uh, basic t basic tactics episode using the 688i and then after that I'll probably do some like advanced tactics and all that stuff of using um, some of the different ships so let's get uh, started here and we'll go uh, show you guys how to really use um, the Los Angeles class to the best uh, effect Uh, one thing you may notice, I did cha uh, turn the sound down quite a bit from last time because I was running my video and it seemed to be that it was kind of hard to hear me at some points. So I have to go into the mission editor really fast. I'm not going to explain exactly what I'm doing. In fact, I'll do that in a later episode. And I also actually, going back to it, I forgot to go over the editor in this episode. So I'll do that. Um, probably I'll add in a third, actually, yeah, third episode, maybe right in here or something, or maybe at the end. I don't know yet, but so we'll do that at some point, so don't worry, that is to come. So I'm just going to do this really fast to get to get moving because this is going to take a little while to go over everything. Okay. Oops. And I'll explain the scripting and what it when what all of this stuff does and all that. So, there we go. Okay, so we come to the missions, and here's our mission right here. And we'll continue on to do it. Okay, so here we are. And this is the game, so this is what the game looks like. Uh, so up here, this is the map. Um, this, this shows you where your uh, vessel is. And your vessel will all your platform will always look the same it'll always be this uh, little blue dot with a crosshair in the middle and up in the right hand corner we can see here's a picture of us or a actually a, like a live video stream kind of thing and you can click on this button and it'll switch between the two it's kind of handy I like it this way more um, so yeah here's the ship pretty cool and then down here you can see there's quite a few things down here that I'll g uh, explain and so starting over here on the right, there's a little time thing that'll allow you to accelerate the time. It is very useful because this game can take a very long time. It's all uh, real time. So this really helps w with that. Uh, this is your course. I'll get into a course if you don't know what that is. Um, so right now we're headed 000, and I'll get into that when we go to the helm, which is up here. Uh, your speed is, f my speed is 5 knots. And f one knot is uh, one nautical mile per hour, and one mile one nautical mile per hour is about 1.1 miles per hour. So that just kind of gives you a conversion factor to give you an idea. Uh, the depth is 369 feet. That is from the bottom of the keel of the ship to the surface of the water, and then t uh, 12,016 feet from the bottom of the ship to the seafloor. And so that's quite quite a ways down there. So we don't need to really worry about that in this episode because um, sometimes you have to worry about crashing to the bottom, which is never good. Uh, you can see right here, this is kind of your little display. This tells you what's going on in your ship. This is the um, crewmen talking. And so as you can see, we have a new contact on the bearing of 059, and he's designated it Sierra 1. As we can, if we scroll up here, SO1, that's Sierra 1. And then if we click the little green thing, uh, this is the mission and radio s um, radio s uh, signals and like briefing and all that. If you actually have briefing, I didn't actually do any briefing for this mission. It was quite fast. So that's what that would be. And then the ye little yellow triangle is your multiplayer chat. So and we don't need that right now. Um, then the little wrench, if you can kind of guess it, it's uh, damage, but we don't have any damage, so it's blank. 
uh, the little speaker thing. It, this is a uh, commands that allows you to do a lot of the things you can with the ship without having to go through everything. It's a lot faster sometimes, and sometimes speed is of the e of the essence in this game. So that that's going to be very useful. Then we can come here to the stations uh, panel, and this shows you all the stations of the ship, right here. And so we have the helm. This is the sonar, radar, uh, electronics, or uh, radio and ESM. It's just like the electronics kind of station. I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, the torpedo room, this is the map right here, then this is the TMA, and this is the periscope. So we're going to head to the helm, and, uh, and I'll explain what all these things do. And so we're gonna, um, I'm going to start up here with the course, and so this is the course, and it's in degrees, so you're on a cir circle, and uh, do 180 is due south, 090 is due east, 270 is due west, and 000 is due north. And you have everything else in between. You can kind of click around on this dial to tell the ship where to go. So like if I want to head over here to 270, I can click right here. And you can see if we come to the little blue blinking button, the helmsman will say, come left to course 268, helm I. So that's, uh, that's kind of a fun little thing about the game. And then uh, over here we have our engine speed. You can click on the different speeds you want to go. Uh, this is going backwards, forwards, uh, one third, two thirds, standard, full, and flank. Uh, so five knots, ten knots, fifteen knots, twenty knots, thirty-five knots, and then so if you don't want to go, if you want to go somewhere in between there, you can either select it down here. So we can um, select like, like if I want to go three knots, we can go three knots, or you can do it here too by clicking on the different numbers and changing numbers. So. I'm going to go up to periscope depth, which means that the periscope and most of the all of the antennas, except the radar, can go up, uh, peek above the water so we can see what's out there. So what I'm going to do is I know the periscope depth, depth for this ship is 0, 06 3 feet. So we're going to just change that to like that. So you see, I kind of I didn't do it fast enough, so the game thought I wanted to go to six nine. So that's pretty much most of the stuff you need to know here. Um, I'll get into what the rest of the stuff does during basic tactics, like th what the to what the toad array is, um, and all that. Uh, so that that is to come. So don't worry. Uh, you might be able to figure it out on your own. Actually, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go over it now. But what what it is, it's a basically a long cable with a bunch of uh, hydrophones on it, which are basically microphones, and they can pick up sound in the water, and that allows you to te detect uh, other ships and all that. So that's what this is for, and it can. Uh, I'll show you. So like if we stream it, uh, there's a little red bar that'll slowly move across and once it gets all the way that means you can't extend it anymore. So, But I'm not going to fool with that right now. It's uh, very important because the toad array tends to be much more accurate than any of the other sensors on the ship. So, uh, and I guess with that we're going to head on over to Sonar and I'm going to show you what you mean, uh, show you what I mean by that. So, uh, here is the um, we cannot really can't use the toad array at this point because it's so close to the ship. The ship's making noise, so we can't really see anything per se. So here's the uh, bow, s the uh, sphere uh, sonar or the bow, and right here you can see there's a line, and this line is our target. And what the what this allows you to do, you can see I'm dragging this little um, thing up here around. What it allows you to do is it allows you to select a location to listen to. So that's what I'm doing right now, is by moving that around. And so that um, allows you to listen to there. And then I have the auto crew enabled because uh, that's what you're pro if you're a beginner to this, this is probably what you're going to want to use as the auto crew. And um, so yeah, that's basically what this is. It allows you to listen to um, stuff in the water. And I'll again, I'm going to go into much greater depth uh, with everything in the basic tactics episode, which is. Um, to come in a few episodes, but so we'll get there. But I'm just doing a very, very brief overview of everything. Um, here is the narrow band. Uh, this allows you to. It's basically the same thing as the broadband back here, except it puts it in um, audio s or like uh, uh, spikes. And so all of this is background noise all here. And there's no real uh, definitive um, uh, ship noise, but you can kind of see it as we come right about there. There's a bit right there. You can see these lines right here. So that's what that was. And there's, you can see it's uh, much noisier with the toad array because it's, again, right next to the ship because we did not extend it at all. So like if you come right here. I don't even know 
if we can see it right as of as of now. Yeah, see, we can't even see it right now. So that's what that is, and that that's very useful. Uh, the demon waterfall allows you to uh, tell how fast an enemy ship is moving. Again, we'll get into that in much much more detail later. Um, this is the active sonar, and what the active sonar does is it sends a ping or a very loud uh, sound out into the ocean. And if it hits something, it comes back and it tells you where it is. So I'm going to show you that in just this uh, here right now. So we can transmit. And any second now, there he is right there. So here's our enemy ship right here in the water. And that's what that little blip is right there. Is that is that That's the enemy ship right there. So that's that. And then, uh, but the only problem with doing this is when you send out that uh, uh, ping or loud, um, the, the, when you send out the ping, the enemy ship, if it's capable, like our, what our ship can do, is it can sense where that ping came from. And so by doing that, you can give the enemy where he, uh, information of where you are, too. So it's kind of, it has its, um, it's, it's useful if you're a, s a surface ship looking for a submarine, but it's not very useful as a submarine. So, I'll again, uh, basic tactics, we'll get into that. And then this is your uh, water display. So this shows you how deep the water is and what the temperature gradient is. Um, and there's a lot of um, thinking that can go into all of this and what this all means, but again, I'm not going to get into that. So, yep, so that's pretty much the sonar in a really brief uh, overview. Uh, next is the ESM and radio. So the radio, again, you'll um, rec receive messages from uh, the command during an actual mission, and it'll tell you what to do. And then the ESM is something that if we raise it, I'll show you right now, it uh, can detect radio signals. So what it'll do is it'll tell you the bearing, and the bearing is on this uh, on this circle right here. The bearing is relative to where your ship. So if we s if on the ESM we which is this thing right here, so you can see right here. So it's the circle, and so if we come back here, and I'll show you. If we uh, find a ship on the ESM or detect radio transmissions from uh, three three zero. There will there'll be a little thing right here, and then that is the, the uh, bearing relative to where our ship is compared to where that ship is, or the uh, origin of the radio transmission. So if we come back down here, we can see there's the little line that I was talking about, and you want to place the arrow right in the middle of this, and then it'll tell us what is making that radio uh, transmission, but it, will c but it can't tell us the range. So, yep, so there we go, right there. So that's that. Uh, again, I'll do much more with this later in the uh, later episodes. Uh, here's the torpedo room. I can't really do too much of this right now. Um, basically, what, what you wind up having to do is if you want to select a track to target, so let's say if I want to shoot at uh, SO2, I select him. I can either use that or I can use the drop-down menu right here. And then I select the tube number, so I would click on the 1 if I wanted to use that tube. And I would come over here. And then I would flood. I would flood the tube. I would equalize the uh, pressure on either side of the tube. Then I would open the muzzle door, and then I would fire the weapon. And then the weapon would track, depending on where you thought that track was. So, like if we were firing an SO2, it would go down over here and try and find try and find him. But the problem is, is I know where the ship was that the enemy ship I set up, and he's nowhere near down here. And the reason for that is, is when the ship so not everything you pick up is actually going to be a ship. It's sometimes, like, so you see these two tracks are fairly close together. That means that the computer is fairly certain that there's probably going to be something up here in this um, area. But this range is nowhere near to what I set it as. And then during regular missions, you're not going to know what the range is. So you're not just going to want to, like, oh, I, I found someone, just shoot at him. Because that th this thing right here doesn't e even exist. This is just background noise that the computer mistakes as a ship. And to get rid of him, what we can do is we can come down here to the TMA, and we can select him because we know he's not actually going to be there, and we can just hit drop contact. There he is. He's gone. So, But you don't want to do that unless you're absolutely certain that he's not. He doesn't actually exist. So then we... So what the TMA does, it, it, it displays... Um, where where the enemy ship is and how confident you are on, on his location. So if you come up, so you see this little um, display thing up here in the left hand corner. So there's these dots, 
and each dot represents a different piece of information, and the information can be plus or minus negative, uh, pl plus or minus five. So if it's straight up and down the middle, that means it's very good information, and you n and you're fairly certain to know where he is. And if you notice, there are, if I can pan up here, there are three lines here, and there are three dots. So you can tell there's these two dots that go way off here and off to the right, and then there's the one that goes straight down the middle. And the way the computer does it is that it takes uh, these three pieces in of information and averages the location. So it, it's going to put him somewhere about right in here. So you can see how I can move him around like that. So he was somewhere like right about there. So that's uh, that's a cool thing you can do. And then down here it displays information of what you know on the target. So like what his course is, uh, his speed, uh, how far away he is in yards, at least what you think. And then the bearing, again, the bearing is the relative um, location to your ship. So, and then this, this up here shows you where he is and all that stuff. So, and then we're also fairly confident that SO1 and SO3 are the same contacts. So what we can do is we can merge SO1 with SO3. We can hit the merge button and it'll make him master one. So now we have all of this information on where we think he is. So when we get more information, it'll average it out much more better. That's a bet. That's pretty bad grammar. Uh, it'll average it out better. It'll um, we'll be able to know exactly where he is. So this is again very brief. A lot more goes into this. Um, here's your periscope. I'll raise the periscope. Show you guys what this looks like. Um, and then we're pretty much nearing the end of this episode. We can. So we can come down here to the TMA and we can decide, okay, his bearing is about 039, that's where we think he is. So if we come to the periscope, we can move it around to 039. Uh, this is going to be, there we go. And, do we see anything? Wait, oops. Yep, okay, so here he is, right here. So we're a couple degrees off, but the computer is fairly, uh, dead on and so here we go here's a uh, super tanker and this was the enemy that I set up for this and so that's him and so we actually know he's at zero uh, zero one four and so we can mark so you can see that I just marked the con contact so we come back here and we can actually see VO1 so this is a visual contact that's what the V stands for and this is master one right here so we can even come down here and we even merge the two merge them like that. Okay, so now we know what he is and where he is. So, so, uh, so that's pretty much uh, ending, coming close to the end of the episode, and um, yeah, so I'll be going over um, a bit more of what these um, uh, things, c all of these things on this, uh, on these different ships can do. So this was very, very basic. Um, just to let you guys know what everything does, that's kind of a good place to start out. And then I'll do this for all of the platforms, and then I'll kind of wrap it all up in a basic tactics episode. That'll probably be maybe half an hour uh, to 45 minutes in length. And that I'll just, uh, using most of the, plat most of the platforms, um, show you how to combine all of these systems into a uh, fully functioning combat um, uh, station not really what the word I was looking for but it'll do um, so so yeah again thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you again